This video is about how I transformed plain white hollow core doors into look like real wood. And from that, Show you what I used and um, be a little bit more detailed. This is the wood graining tool set. Um, you can get it at major box stores. I think I got this at Home Depot. Um, comes with three parts a handle, two different size pads for the wood grain pattern, and a little hand piece. Here's a look at my hoist system that I came up with because I knew I was going to be flipping these doors by myself for the most part. Um, so I, I welded together a rail, screwed it up to the joists, put a chain with a 2x4 across there uh, to distribute the weight evenly. I uh, made these plywood um, brackets, I guess handles uh, that way if someone was with me uh, we could just grab them and flip them easily and stack them the stain this is what I'm using you have to use a gel stain uh, you can't use you know the runny uh, watery stain you have to use a gel type stain gloves I use a foam brush just to kind of do inside the panels and then uh, rags, rags to keep your stuff clean and um, to wipe on the second, uh, well the applications after the first is all rags. I like to use a coffee can lid to scoop the gel stain out of and just to put in this, it's just easier to pick up with the rag instead of dipping your whole hand in a can and just keep some uh, paint thinner or mineral spirits around to keep your stuff clean so we can get started first thing I do is just make sure the doors are nice and clean use a shop bag with a brush end on it or uh, you could use a tack cloth or something just to Pick up any dust on the surface before you want to get before you get started. Try to do this one-handed to show you what I do. Liberal amount on there. Sorry for the shakiness of the camera, but trying to do this one-handed and holding the camera at the same time was a little bit of a challenge. Take your tool, kind of nice even pressure. You can wiggle back and forth, uh, front and back, uh, to kind of change what part of the tool you're using, which makes a different pattern. So I like to go opposite grain, like strike one way and then strike another way, the opposite way. Makes it look nice. Same thing over here, nice even pressure, uh, there's not really a speed to go, I mean you can go pretty fast, you can go real slow, really kind of rock that back and forth to make some weird looks on there, so, and I'm not, right now, it looks like very contrasted areas, you know, like really white against really dark brown, but you know, this is gonna get three more coats of darkening over it. So all of that's gonna to blend together and look natural, you know, the natural variety you have in the different colors and grains and stuff. See, I'm not really going that fast. I mean, it's not really necessary to try to go really fast or, I mean, you could mess up 
you know, wipe it back over and do it all over again if you, if you do mess up. So, like, let me show you what I mean. So, say, you know, oh, oh I messed up. You know, like, that's not that big of a deal because all you got to do is take your rag, you know, smear it back up, start over. You can do that as many times as you want. So don't be scared to try this. Just kind of nice rocking back and forth to get some different looks in there. Go the opposite way. Try to start at the edge so your pattern starts right on that edge. And there you go. All right, so it's been about 48 hours since we did the first texture coat. Uh, it's really important to wait until it's not sticky anymore. Um, even if it's a little sticky, you don't want to continue and do the rest. So wait until it's completely smooth, not sticky at all. Um, because what you'll find is when you go and put on the first darkening coat you'll start to smear the texture you laid down on the first run so uh, you don't want to ruin all the hard work you already put in so wait it's worth waiting it might take even longer it's really cold here right now so um, it, it took about 48 hours uh, so now it's ready for the first coat of darkening show you the process here first step um, just using a rag to rub it on um, try to kind of use something a little bit smaller that you can get into your hand nice and easy uh, so you're not you don't have like a tail swinging around or anything smearing what you just did but yeah just gonna get some on there and I just Get all that white area covered. Get it in that inside. I mean, you can be pretty liberal, liberal about this because if you put on too much, you can just wipe it off. So I like to go in a circle pattern, kind of going against the grain, and then to smooth it out make a few passes over, get it nice and smooth, got to blend out the outside, we're going to go back over that anyway, so I kind of get it off the rag and then into the sides, it's a good opportunity to get those corners kind of nice and dark now, so you're not getting little white flecks left over in the corner that you got to touch up. And a circle pattern. And then on 
get my late passes across the top. So I always do those center panels first. And then I always like to do the vertical in between as I'm doing the panels. Just moving around less, I guess. It does get a little bit tacky over time. So you kind of want to move fast. Just the less you touch it to get it to look good, the better. Because I found that sometimes if you're borderline waiting until it's dry, that new stain will still activate that old stain. And you'll start to smear off your old your wood grain texture but this has been drying for a good 48 hours it might be different you know depending on how humid or cold or outside in a garage ventilated whatever so you just touch it if it's tacky don't do it if it's not tacky it's nice and smooth you're safe to go ahead and put on this first darkening layer because it will rub off and you'll be really mad about it because you waited all that time for it to dry and just to not wait long enough is kind of silly. So next I go into my horizontal rails kind of go with the, the pattern of your panels and with the pattern of your wood grain yeah so it's you can make swipes going from one end to the panel to the other end of the panel without having breaks in between so it's nice to make it all smooth and one full swipe but these sides are a little bit trickier you got to be have a little bit more of a technique um, what I like to do start at the end kind of make sure you get that white covered make sure you don't swipe into what you already did because that's gonna uh, cause you to go back and redo what you've done make sure you're getting to the edge and staying with that panel line so swipe off the edge when you start Depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed, you might want to start from the other end, but I'm going to work from this way over. And then, for me, I can go into two, two swipes pretty much, but you want to swipe into your previous Swipe. So you don't want to start here and swipe this way. You want to start on the fresh stuff or the stuff that doesn't have anything on it and swipe into your stain. You can start from the knob and go out. You're not really going to notice that anyway. The doorknob's going to go there. All right. side this is the last last one I gotta do it's like off the edge. I missed a little bit right there so I can go back and hit that again give it a little bit more pattern and then 
and swipe into your previous spot. That's it. I mean, it's pretty, pretty easy. Once you do, this is uh, probably about the 15th door I've done. So you could stop there if you're looking for a lighter color. You can wait till this dries. So this second layer, I find it takes about six hours, which is a lot better. It's a lot thinner of a coat, so it doesn't take nearly as long for it to dry smooth so and that's a pretty cool color as it is you could go ahead and polyurethane that if you wanted to but we're gonna go another step darker there it is finished doors so I can do seven at a time before I run out of space to pull the chain up finish it off with this self-leveling scratch resistant polyurethane by Zar. Um, I really like this stuff. It's really superior stuff. It will be in um, satin. Definitely the fast drying in two hours is pretty awesome. Um, I find that you definitely need to do at least two coats. If you get bubbles you can go back with some uh, really fine steel wool in between coats and um, that's it. Thanks for watching my video.